Okay, so we're going to start looking at some of the patterns in the periodic table and we're going to start off with atomic size. Now, atoms are extremely tiny, so how do we actually measure the size of them? So actually what we do is we measure the length of a bond between two atoms. So this is known as the covalent radius. So I've drawn here a diagram of hydrogen. You might remember these from National 5 where the atoms' orbitals are overlapping. So that's the shared pair of electrons there mm -hmm. that constitute the covalent bond. Now, these atoms are held together because the shared electrons have a mutual attraction for the positive nuclei in the middle. Okay. Now, we can measure bond length, covalent bond length. Okay, So that gets measured. And then if you half that bond length, that gives you the covalent radius. So basically, half the distance between the two nuclei. So we can use covalent radius as a gauge for how big the atom actually is, because the bigger the covalent radius is, the bigger the atom must be. Now, if there is a page in the data booklet that tells you what the covalent radii or radius is for the different elements. However, there are no values for um, the noble gases. And that is because they don't form any bonds so there's no way of measuring their covalent radius so we basically just use if we're talking about the size of any of the noble gases we just use the general pattern that we see uh, going across the period or down a group that we're going to discuss in a minute to guesstimate um, or make an educated guess at whether the atom would be big or small okay but Atomic size and covalent radius, you might see those terms used interchangeably, but the covalent radius is just a way for us to measure the atomic size because atoms are so small. Based on where an atom is in the periodic table or an element is in the periodic table, you can tell a lot about a lot of its chemical and physical properties. So you can uh, work out how it reacts, you can work out roughly what its melting boiling point is, you can work out how big the atom is roughly, um, and lots of other different things that we'll look at over the rest of the higher chemistry course. Um, but what we're going to start doing just now is looking at how the atomic size varies going across the period. So that's across from left to right. So I've got lithium here, which is the first element in the second row, in the second period, and then it goes all the way along to neon. So in order to explain this, we need to draw um, the structures of the atoms. So this will take you back to your national five. So we're not really interested in the neutrons, only the protons and electrons. So lithium has three protons in the nucleus, so that's three positive in the middle. And then in its electron shells, it's got an electron arrangement of two, one. Okay, and I'll just write the electron arrangement under there. Right, so then if we draw neon, it's got 10 positive charge in the middle and its electron arrangement is two, eight. So if we're looking at the size of these atoms, they, they both have the same number of occupied electron shells. That's how you describe it. So they both only have two filled electron shells. So in that respect, they should really be about the same size. However, neon, because it's got a much bigger nuclear charge, and that, by that I mean there's more protons in the nucleus, that will pull these negative electrons in closer so it actually makes it smaller so you really want to think about the atoms like big magnets so there's a big positive charge in the middle that's attracting all of these negative electrons around the outside and the bigger that positive charge is the bigger the pool is so they'll get pulled in even closer so because neon has a, a larger nuclear charge the outer electrons are pulled in closer and therefore it makes the atom smaller when compared to lithium okay so the way we would um, write this in any explanations we were giving for the pattern that we're seeing across the period in atomic size, we would explain that atomic size decreases across the period due to an increasing nuclear charge pulling the outer electrons in closer. It's the increasing nuclear charge bit that's important here. Okay, so. The atomic size decreases across a period due to an increasing nuclear charge. Okay, so you really just want to try and start thinking about atoms like 
magnets, okay, the big positive charge in the middle attracting the negative charges on the outside. And the bigger that attraction in the middle is, the closer those negative electrons will be pulled in, which will make it smaller. Okay? So now we're going to look at atomic size going down a group. So I've taken lithium and sodium as the examples this time. So again, in order to explain this um, better, I'm going to draw the atoms. So we already drew lithium before, so it's got three positive charge in the middle. With the electron arrangement two, one. Get that there. Okay, and then sodium, it's got an 11 positive charge in the middle because it's got atomic number 11. And then its electron arrangement is two, eight, one. Just remember you'll, you'll get the electron arrangements in the data booklet uh, on one of the pages, can't remember which one. Uh, right, so if we're now comparing the size of these atoms, so the sodium does have a bigger nuclear charge, so there is a bigger positive charge in the middle to pull the electrons in closer. However, because we've, sodium actually has one extra occupied energy level compared to lithium, the outer electron, so the, the electrons that are actually defining the end of the, the edge of the atom, are further away. So because its outer electron is further from the nucleus, it's actually bigger. And that's because of the increased numbers um, of occupied energy levels. Okay, so even though the nuclear charge is bigger, the outer electron is further away, so it's not going to be as attracted to the nucleus. Right, because if you think about it, if you have two magnets and you're putting the opposite ends next to each other, they won't attract until they get really, really close. So if they're really far away, there's no magnetic attraction. It's, just, it's a similar thing with the atoms. Okay, the further away the electrons are from the nucleus, the less of an attraction the electrons will feel for the nucleus. All right. So in order to explain this in, in a written form, we'd say the atomic size increases going down a group due to increasing numbers of occupied energy levels. Okay? And then that's then results in the outer electrons being further from the nucleus, but it's the bits that I've underlined in red that are the important bit. Okay, So due to increasing numbers of occupied energy levels, as you go down a group, the size of the atoms gets bigger.